go. Essentially what happens when you go and speak to a therapist, okay? You are attempting to unpack layers of awareness. You're trying to find out more about yourself. They are trying to guide you because a good therapist is one who doesn't indoctrinate you into their way of being, but actually helps finesse or, or prompt you um, so that you can cultivate your own, which is really, really important. I think um, any therapist, psychologist, counselor, um, spiritual psychologist, whatever you want to call it, whatever, it really doesn't matter. But anyone who's offering you skills or advice shouldn't try to indoctrinate you. So if you feel like you're seeing someone right now who is, and you know, the, the word that you could probably hint at is should, you know, you should do this, or maybe you shouldn't, you know, it's like, well, okay, there's some indoctrination going on there. So I want you to have a think about how the therapist you're going to see can actually help you become more of who you already are in a more fulfilling way. So that's a really good way of thinking about it. That really helped me when I was actually going to therapy before I became a therapist. Um, so essentially what they're trying to do in the, in the therapy world is help you unpack layers of yourself, get to know yourself. So if you come and speak to someone, um, you know, when you are talking about the fact that you have high anxiety, what they will try to do is help you see why you might have anxiety. So a good therapist won't just treat the symptom, they'll get to the root cause so that you can learn from your life. You know, just straight off the top of my head, if you never grieved properly over the death of a loved one and you went on living in, you know, in life, and we, we do need to do that, but we also do need that, you know, the only way to progress through a grieving process is to go through the grieving process. It's so necessary. You know, it's an identity shift. We need to shed the emotion. We need to feel and express the emotion. If you don't allow yourself to do that, and then there's this thing biting at you, but you're masking it with, you know, painkillers, hard drugs, you know, not sleeping, trying to get the deadlines done in your, you know, in your respective career, you might develop an anxiety disorder. Now, a therapist will try to understand why you have high anxiety, where the, uh, you know, the specificity of the pathology, and then help you move through, in this example, the grieving process, so that not only do you know why you have anxiety, but you know how it, where it's emanating from, get rid of the root cause, and then you go on and live your life. And what that is going to do is going to unpack yourself more, okay? So after that successful session or series of sessions, you'll know, as an example, that if you don't grieve properly, these things can develop, okay? So therapy, speaking to a therapist is an awareness tool. And I'm writing about six different awareness tools in this book. One of them is also open, honest communication. It doesn't have to be with a therapist, but the truth is confronting. And if you have a friend who can um, provide a space for you to confront the truth, now that they might be giving you constructive criticism, um, but uh, their ability to hold space for you whilst you understand yourself with their finesse, if they're a really brilliant friend, um, can be really powerful too. So communication tools are one example of unpacking awareness. You can do this yourself in solitude. You know, in fact, one thing that I love to do is sit still with my eyes shut every day for 20 minutes. So I get to know myself in silence. Okay. Now, whether you're into, um, you know, spirituality and what the mythologies used to teach about solitude and all this sort of stuff, it's a when you are um, cultivating greater consciousness, that's a masculine thing to do, okay? And then the flow is, you know, moving with life is a more of a feminine thing to do. Now, obviously, we all have masculine and feminine um, aspects within us, but consciousness is the masculine energy or light or love is the feminine. We need both, you know? Depends on whether or not you're a masculine core or a feminine core as to which one you actually reside in the most, okay? So as a masculine being myself, I like to reside in that infinite consciousness as best as I can. So I really want to, freedom is an idea, you know, more is less, all that sort of stuff. 